Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. This is work you've got to do for yourself. Nobody else can watch your breath for you. They can see you breathing, but the way the breath feels inside is something only you can know. The way your mind feels from inside is something only you can know. But it's important to remember this isn't the only area of the practice. After all, we are social beings as human beings. We live in groups. And as the Buddha said, if you want to provide a protection for yourself or make yourself into a protector, something you can depend on, you have to look out not only for your own benefit, but also for the benefit of the group as well. That's why the Buddha said one form of protection is you learn the duties that have to be done in the group. And you learn how to do them well and with ingenuity. In other words, you really pay attention to what you're doing. Make sure the duties get well done. I saw this with a John Fuang, even as he got older in life. He'd come around the monastery. If there's anything that wasn't quite right, he'd fix it, put it in its place. Which, of course, created a good atmosphere for the group as a whole. If John is doing that, other people should be doing it too. And there's that principle that the way you do anything is the way you do everything. John Mahabhava talks about how important it is to do your outside duties with a lot of intentness. So you develop that quality of being intent, being true to your duties, looking for what needs to be done that maybe you haven't been told to do, but you see it needs to be done and you're happy to do it. Because the same principle applies inside. There's not going to be somebody sitting on your shoulder all the time as you meditate telling you what to do. You've got to see what needs to be done. You've got to be intent on what you're doing. And you have to show some ingenuity and figure out how to solve the problems as they come up. So it's good training for your inner training, the outside duties you have to do. Learn to do them well, because it's good for the group, and when you have a good group, it's a good place to live. And whenever you fall into hardship, the group will be happy to help. There is that story of the monk who fell sick in the time of the Buddha, and nobody cared for him. The Buddha had to go himself, together with Ananda. They cared for the monk. And they asked the monks, do you know about that monk over there who's sick? And they said, yeah, we know. Is no one looking after him? No, he doesn't do anything for us. Now the Buddha scolded the monks. But still, it tells you something about how the attitude of the group is. If you help the group, the group will be happy to help you when you're in need. And if you develop the ability to look after the duties of the group, then when you have to go to another group, they're happy to have you. When I was learning the body mocha, John Fung talked about cases where you go into the forest. You find a really nice place to stay. But there are, there are three monks there already. None of them know the body mocha. If you're the fourth monk, somebody has to chant the body mocha, so they're not going to let you stay if you don't know it. If you do know it, you're hap they're happy to receive you. So as you live in a group, look out after the group, because that gets part of your protection. You make the group a good group, the group is happy to help you. And you develop qualities inside that are going to be, from your outside duties, that are going to be useful for your inside duties as well. So when you're looking for protection, remember, you look for yourself. But you don't, you don't look out just after yourself. You want to protect the group that you're in. And whatever duties they have, whatever work has to be done with the group that needs to be done, you're happy to do it. And that way you, protect, you spread your protection all around. <coughs>